Recording started. Okay, today we're going to be covering our last topic, and that is uh, adaptations. So, um, when you're examining changes in populations, uh, you need to sort of understand that populations will undergo a change in their morphology, which is like their their physical characteristics, basically. Now, geologists have witnessed this throughout the fossil record, so there have been changes. Now, morphology is the detailed shape and form of an animal. Now, the fossil record is the record of all life on Earth uh, that is preserved by all fossils that exist, whether dug up or are still in the ground. Um, now, some changes are gradual through generations, and this is called gradualism. And some changes are abrupt, and this is called punctuated equilibrium. Now, a generation is a single step in the line of descent. So, uh, you know, you go from grandmother, mother, and daughter would represent three generations. Now, gradualism is the theory that changes in the populations uh, two organisms have occurred slowly over time. A punctuated equilibrium is a theory that changes to organisms in a population can occur in rapid spurts followed by long periods of uh, sort of dormancy or, or non-change. So here you can see some examples of the gradualism model where the species descended from a common ancestor gradually diverging more and more in morphology, in this case the color, um, as they're acquiring adaptations. Now, punctuated equilibrium says a new species changes uh, most as it buds from a parent species. So here you have, you know, going from one type of butterfly to another type of butterfly. So mechanisms of inheritance. Well, inheritance is passed on through genes. So the basic unit of inheritance passed on from a parent uh, two offspring is the gene. Now, mutation is a change in the genetic instructions. So it's going to be a change uh, in the codes, in the DNA code that the gene is sort of made of. And here you see a mutation. You've got a duck with lots of extra feet. That's creepy. Uh, now, an adaptation is any structural trait or behavioral trait that improves an organism's success at surviving and reproducing in a particular environment. And variation is a difference in the frequency of genes and traits among individual organisms within a population. Now, Darwin's finches. Uh, D Charles Darwin observed finches on the Galapagos Islands and observed that the finches had different characteristics depending on where they were located on the island. And in some areas of the island, you saw you know finches that had more of a grasping, probing bill to eat insects because Insects were more plentiful in that part of the island. Um, you also have those that had a bigger beak that was large for crushing and eating seeds. And then there's also a parrot-like bill to eat fruit. So the different bills on the finches uh, were, you know, the variation that, that Darwin observed. Now, Darwin's theory of evolution uh, states that the nature of a population gradually changes over time. Okay, and his theory is based on three organisms. One is that organisms produce more offspring than can survive. So in nature, quite often, you have uh, lots of offspring that don't survive, you know, equally long. Um, there is variation within a population. That's his other obs observation. You saw finches with different sized beaks, you know. Uh, and the third one was organisms within a population compete for limited resources. So, particularly in times when resources are low, that competition is going to result in some uh, organisms surviving at a greater rate than others, okay? Or some phenotypes, you know, some physical characteristics surviving at a greater rate. Okay, and this led to the theory of natural selection, which is the theory stating that evolution takes place because more organisms are produced than can survive, and that only the organisms best suited to their environment survive to reproduce, and in turn pass on their advantageous traits to their offspring. <clears throat> okay, now Darwinian fitness um, is connected with those animals that are best adapted and have a greater chance of survival, which allow them to pass on their traits 
to their offspring. So Darwinian fitness is all about being able to reproduce and pass on your traits. Uh, now this does not mean the strongest survive, but instead the best adapted survive. Now the environment can change, however. So one, one interesting aspect about this is that if that change is not unidirectional, then the adaptation uh, will not be unidirectional either. Okay, so let's say uh, an area gets dry. So, you know, those creatures would adapt in such a way that they would be more adapted for um, dry conditions. But if the conditions then became wet, then those organisms, um, you know, that were better adapted to the wet environment would start to survive more and you'd have sort of a reverse adaptation process occurring. So it's not always directional. I guess that's one thing you want to realize. Uh, the, the theory of natural selection describes that evolution takes place because more organi organisms are produced than can survive and that the best adapted survive and pass on advantageous traits. Now, you know, that the best adapted, that's also, uh, you know, something a person needs to think about because depending on how limited the, um, you know, environment is, you might have more than the, the, the best, you might have the pretty good adapted and the best adapted surviving and the really poorly adapted are the ones that die. So availability of, of uh, resources plays a pretty key role in that. So evidence to support evolution. Now this is this evidence that has been used to support evolution, um, but it, it should be said that a lot of this evidence has been criticized to some extent. Okay. Anyway, homologous structures. These are structures that show, um, that appear to be similar and therefore it's assumed that they may have shared uh, an ancestor. Okay. So you see here the flipper of a whale has sort of a similar bone configuration uh, as the leg of an alligator. You know, if you, you know, elongate this bone and shorten this bone and, and that type of thing. Uh, you know, the arm of a human or the foot of a cat has some similarities in its structure as well. A whale and a bat. So the, the thought is that, you know, whales and bats and cats and humans um, could have had a, a shared ancestor, okay, due to these similarities. Now, other people have suggested that similarities should be more genetic than, um, you know, structural and if the genes that control you know the the placement of the bones are, are not in some way homologous then you know this theory of, of descent of common descent uh, doesn't hold up as well so that's that's an area of investigation shall we say uh, as far as that goes <clears throat> now vestigial structures were structures that Darwin thought no longer served a purpose uh, but did at one time now this has been pretty much proven to be erroneous for the most part, okay? Uh, you know, <laughs> your, your tailbone, uh, the tailbone coccyx uh, definitely has uh, a current function, so it is not vestigial. Uh, your thymus gland has a function, your tonsils have a function, uh, eyelashes, eyebrows, uh, ear muscles, they all have a function, okay? Your pineal gland, wisdom teeth, body hair. Uh, you know, so vestigial structures, um, a little bit of a, a sketchy evidence because uh, most of what has been described as being vestigial has been shown to have uh, a current function and a fairly necessary one uh, for a lot of things. Anyway, Lamarck. Before Darwin proposed his theory of evolution, Lamarck proposed a different theory as to why populations change. He believed that organisms could produce parts or traits that would improve their chance of survival and these parts uh, that were not used would eventually disappear. Okay, uh, and Lamarck also sort of talked about um, these environmental factors that could affect the sort of like the encourage the production of, of traits as opposed to you know those traits just being there without a stimulus. Cloning. Now, cloning is a type of asexual reproduction. 
which is the production of an identical offspring from a single parent cell by budding, by the division of, of the single cell, or by the division of the entire organism into two or more parts. And here we have a picture of Dolly the sheep. She was, I don't know if this is Dolly or the clone of Dolly. How would you ever know the difference? Okay, anyway, they are genetically identical. Sheeps have been cloned. Lack of consensus. Now, most uh, scientists agree with the general principles of natural selection, but not all scientists agree that mutation in natural selection can ac account for what's observed in the natural world. So, different guys, like this is a book of uh, Jonathan Wells. Um, he's a PhD in something or other. Anyway, there's there's lots of guys with PhDs that say, yes, evolution absolutely occurred the way these, that we say it, it occurred. And then there's a bunch of other PhD guys that are saying, uh, no, I don't think so. So, anyway, uh, I encourage you to look into it yourself as far as that goes. All right. So, um, Oh, just one more comment about this. No one disagrees with microevolution, okay, which means that there's change within species through the mechanism of natural selection. But there's more disagreement about macro uh, evolution, where uh, there's evolutionary change that uh, jumps boundaries, uh, not from species to species, but more from you know order and class and, and that type of thing. Anyway, so. Um, after you listen to this tutorial, make sure you submit your tutorial summary. Have a great day.